Hi, and welcome to Nautel's webinar on our, the introduction of our UHF television transmitters. I'm Chuck Kelly, the Director of Sales for Nautel, and I'm very delighted to be able to share with you a lot of information about our new television UHF transmitters. And so we'll go through today in this webinar uh, a lot of information, um, why Nautel is getting into television, what is the NT series, what makes it unique, what are the prices, when do we ship, and where do we go from here, and we'll have the opportunity to take your questions. You'll notice from the GoToWebinar interface there on the right-hand side of your screen that you have the opportunity to post questions. And you're encouraged to do so, and I'll do my very best to answer those questions at the end of the webinar. If I, for some reason I don't reach your question or don't see your question, um, then I will do my best to go back and find out if there were questions and email you directly answers uh, at the end of uh, after the webinar is over. So, first question is why is Nautel getting into television? I mean, this is a very successful radio company, and over 44 years we've built excellent collaborative relationships with many key customers worldwide. Many who have both radio and television facilities. Many of these customers have asked us to enter the TV transmitter business because they appreciate the reliability, creativity, and level of support they've become used to with our radio transmitters. And additionally, a number of customers have standardized on our AUI user interface for AM and TV, and they want that level of monitoring and control in their television transmitters. Therefore, we introduce the NT series from Nautel. What is it? Well, it's a combination effort, the best of breed design, utilizing Pro Television Modulator. Pro Television is the leading organization in the world making modulators. They're out of Denmark. State of the art LD MOS amplifier de designs, plus Nautel's AUI support and service, combined into decades of experience with innovative, cost effective product which actually advances the state of the art in the television transmission industry significantly. And I guess I would, I would, I would point to the, what we're very, very proud of is the Pick Hit Award we received this year at Broadcast Engineering Magazine uh, at NAB 2013 uh, for our television transmitters. We were the only television transmitter manufacturer so awarded, and uh, we were delighted to have been uh, recognized in that way. So. Without any further ado, the NT series uh, currently consists of two products, an NT150, which is a 2 to 150 watt digital UHF transmitter. It features both linear and nonlinear adaptive pre-correction. It, it features Nautel's award-winning AUI, which we'll show you, and it features a broad range of inputs, including ASI, SMPTE 310, gigabit Ethernet, and an optional AA off-air receiver which works in the ATSC mode. And interestingly, in the NT150 there's an integral critical mass filter as well. And there's a good reason behind all that, and I'll explain that as well as time goes by here. We also have introduced our NT500, which is a 6 to 500 watt digital UHF transmitter, which has all of the features of the above, however it does not include an integral mass filter. And uh, it does include, however, in addition, a inbuilt spectrum analyzer and the OptiPower Enhanced Adaptive Pre-Correction, which is a feature of the Pro Television Modulator and adds a lot to the performance of the transmitter, both in terms of the efficiency and in terms of the MER, the quality of the signal. The transmitters are both based on LD MOS amplifiers for optimum efficiency and performance, and they're based on a very, very high efficiency switch mode power supply, actually the same switch mode power supply that is in use in our newest series of FM transmitters, the EMV Lite. So it provides clean regulated power to the transmitter uh, over an input voltage range of 180 volts to 260 volts, 50 to 60 hertz. It includes an integrated software-defined module, a modulator rather, coming from Pro Television. There's a reason for that. One of the things that's happened and we have learned in the past few years, is that the evolution of digital television standards is an ongoing process. It's not quite like radio, which tends to be one thing and then sticks there rather uh, solidly. Uh, television uh, standards are changing. Even countries that have recently evolved from analog to digital may be switching the digital modes uh, in the near future. Uh, there's a number of countries that started off with DVB-T, for instance, uh, the European standard, 
and then have uh, now evolved to DVB-T2. The problem is that a lot of the transmitters that were designed were custom built for that DVB-T spec, and, and uh, they basically need to be replaced uh, when they move to DVB-T2. So what we wanted to do was to have a modulator which was software definable so that you wouldn't have to change hardware necessarily in order to upgrade the modulator. In addition to that, we wanted a transmitter which was linear enough to be able to make the change from one form of digital television to another form of digital television and still have the linearity to be able to be used in that new mode. In other words, some modes are more critical as to the linearity than other modes. So that was also very, very important. Uh, of course, if the change in mode indicates that there needs to be a change in the mask filter, that has to be handled separately, either by retuning that mask filter or getting a new mask filter. But at least you're not throwing away a transmitter. Transmitters are also based on a high stability OCXO, and there's an input for an external GPS receiver as well as there's an internal GPS receiver which has an external input. Options are available, SFN operation, that's in use with the uh, internal um, GPS. And then there's an uh, internal optional off-air receiver for translator and gap filler use in ATSC mode. Uh, spare parts kits are available, surge protectors are available, toric kits are available as standard operating procedure for Nautel transmitters. Here's the optional ATSC demodulator or receiver. It brings in the RF signal of a of an station it's repeating and then, and then uh, sends out the, the video standard to the transmitter for remodulation and broadcasting. Looking inside the top of the 150 watt version, the NT150, you can see the lineage supply at the top. That's the SMPS, which is used in our uh, NB Light series of transmitters. There's a DC to DC converter below that. So the output of the lineage supply is uh, about 50 volts, and that goes to the input of the DC to DC converter, which creates all of the lower voltages that are needed, and there are low current supplies as well. So it, the 50 volts actually provides for the PA, and then the lower voltage and the lower current uh, supplies are, are um, generated in the DC to DC converter. And there's the controller card, and then there's a GPS and interface, and in the center of the, of the unit is the Pro Television modulator, which plugs in. So that's how that works. Looking at the back of the NT150, you can see the GPS antenna input here. You can see the data monitor input, RF output monitor. RF output connector in the 150 watt version is an N connector. There's a 10 megahertz out and in, one PPS in and out, and a data one and data two. Those are um, the actual inputs which can be um, uh, SMT310 or ASI and switched between them in the software. Uh, the gig gigabit ethernet connector there uh, allows uh, an IP input of, of digital signal. This is the connector for connecting to the web for the purpose of uh, the AUI so that you've got the same kind of web interface that you've got in the Nautel transmitters. And then you have what I would call the parallel in and parallel out, the standard um, remote control type of, of inputs and outputs that are part of the transmitter. There's a ground lug and there's the AC power connector which is 220 volts and then there's a circuit breaker. That's the back of the unit. As I mentioned, the Pro Television card made in Denmark, uh, a software-defined modulator upgrade from one video standard today to a different video standard in, in the future, probably just simply by a software upload. That's the, that's the way it's been designed to be handled that way. And when I say it handles the modes, it handles uh, ATSC, the US standard, it, it handles DVB-T, it handles DVB-T2, and it can also be configured for ISDBT. And there are other standards that are potentially worldwide standards, such as the future of broadcast television standard, which is coming down the road, that it will also in the future be able to handle simply through a software upgrade. This is what the uh, user interface of the Pro Television card by itself looks like. So you can see that the Pro Television card has a very, very in-depth uh, interface and it actually has a block diagram showing you that the active signal at this point in time input is an ASI interface, and that's the one that's active. The ASI 1 is not, not active. Input switching, monitoring mode, pre-correction, output stage, and then it goes through the transmitter and the bandpass filter. And, and the uh, linear and nonlinear 
uh, feedback paths come back for the pre-correction as well. And then there's much more detail below um, that it that provides about each of those green blocks in the top part. Looking at the front of the NT150, you've got the standard type of screen such as was being used in the VS series and the MB Light, uh, four lines of, of LCD. There's status lights, there's the six button remote control, or control pad, and basically everything you'd ever need to do on the transmitter you can do from the LCD and the six button control pad. But of course the AUI interface is much easier to use and, uh, and you can do it from literally anywhere. The air filter, uh, just like in the MVC or VS series rather, is replaceable and washable and you can take out uh, just a couple of screws, even while the transmitter is on the air, and replace that air filter and, uh, and clean it up and put it back in again. So you don't have to take the transmitter off to provide the preventative maintenance. This shows the performance of the mask filter in ATSC mode. Those of you with a keen eye will recognize that this is what is known as a critical mask mask filter. And uh, we actually have taken the harder, more difficult view. And we have actually provided a critical mask filter in all of these transmitters as standard. In the, in the 150 series power level, uh, we have uh, provided the internal uh, mask filter, and it is a critical mask filter. So therefore, it's much more usable in uh, applications where you've got adjacent channels. And DVB-T, this is the mask filter for the DVB-T2 um, uh, filter, and uh, you can see the performance of that in terms of insertion loss and BSWR and ripple and power rating. So it's a, it's a very, very um, effective filter. Looking in the 500 watt version of the transmitter, again, you'd see the controller. It's the same controller, the same modulator, the same GPS interface card, same DC to DC converter. But in this unit, you've got three lineage power supplies uh, underneath this panel here, which has all that stuff we were just talking about. So that's actually a panel that raises up and gives you access to those power supplies and then the power supply distribution card as well. And on the other side, that's where you see the LDMOS PAs, the combiner, the splitter, the IPA. All of those things are on the bottom side. So it's very, very easy access to everything in the transmitter. You can see how that lift-up panel works, and it makes it very easy to service and support um, the NT500. On the back panel, you have all of the standard connectors we were talking about before. The big difference is I've got a DIN connector here at the output, and the AC uh, is, is a different uh, size of, of power connector there. So looking at the AUI, how it's been integrated into the transmitter, this is the main screen. Now understand that the AUI in the 500 is standard with the spectrum analyzer as you see it here. That spectrum analyzer is optional in the 150 watt series. Um, but we have the, uh, the pro television uh, interface at the top of the screen and the spectrum analyzer in the bottom of the screen. I can make either of those full screen, and I can have access to all the additional uh, areas that I can see measurements within the pro television screen by just taking the pro television one to full screen. Um, again, all of the meters and those sorts of things remain stable over the period of time. So they're always there for you to see that the power level is this and the frequency is that and it's an ATSC mode and the ASI1 input is active and it's actually reading out the upper shoulder and the lower shoulder and the MER measurement. And you can define the meters that go on the panel here on the left. And in addition, if you are in the mode of local, of a remote mode rather, and I'm, I'm seeing the transmitter remotely, then I have the ability to hit RF on and RF off and go through the menus and the logs and all those sorts of things. And I'll show you those screens. So this is the screen in which the, the uh, spectrum analyzer, if you've purchased the option on the NT150, or as I said, as the standard on the 500, uh, that spectrum analyzer is available in full screen, and you can see the kind of performance that we get out of the transmitter. Again, just like all of the other AUI-based transmitters that Nautil has, and that's over 1,500 transmitters in the field, I believe, today, um, <clears throat> you can see that you can choose the meters that you like to have in the right-hand panel, and those will stay there uh, because you have the ability to save uh, just for your in, uh, login. So every time you log in, you'll have those same meters there. Again, this is a transmitter which is based on presets, so I can set my power output, I can set my frequency, I can set my mode, set the input, 
and then change those settings as well. Now, bear in mind that, as I said, if you change the frequency or you change the mode and that has an effect on the mask filter, well, then it's not quite so easy because you're going to have to have a changed mask filter. But in some cases, people have a combiner in their station, and the, the, this transmitter might be, for instance, a plus one transmitter, and it could be feeding a broadband port. And in that situation, uh, having those presets, having the ability to change from one mode to another mode, to one frequency to another frequency with the presets would be very, very useful. This is showing the transmitter log. Again, I have the log manager. I can download the log to an Excel file very, very quickly and easy, regardless of where I am. I could be sitting in my home and 100 miles away from the transmitter and still have this kind of access to the transmitter. This is something that's built in. The transmitter status is easily seen, what alarms are going off, things like that. And of course, I can configure this transmitter to send me an email, for instance, if if uh, something is at variance with the settings that I have configured, with the, with the parameters that I have configured. The specifications of the NT series is pretty top notch. Um, you're looking at 150 watts after the mask filter in the NT150 and 500 watts before the mask filter. I mentioned the mask filter is not included in the uh, 500 watt version. Uh, 50 ohm impedance BNC female inputs. Uh, data sources can be ASI 7310 or gigabit Ethernet, uh, 100 megabit or gigabit. Um, RF output on the 150 watts is N female, and RF output on the NT500 is 7, 7 16 inch DIN, as you saw in the, in the pictures of the back panels. Um, we meet the standard uh, out of band emissions with the mask filter. Uh, power stability is very typical, plus or minus 2%. Signal to noise ratio and MER, probably the most critical specifications for a digital television transmitter, are really exemplary. It's 37 dB um, uh, performance at 150 watts, greater than uh, 34 dB in DVB-T2. Uh, 37 was in ATSC, so that's that's pretty good performance, um, and certainly better than transmitters either that are typically at this power level or transmitters that are at this price level. Um, so other other specifications are pretty typical, um, and I think probably the thing that is most interesting about the NT150 particularly is its small size. It's it's only four rack units and weighs 30 kilograms, um, and that's inclusive of the mask filter. So typically, if you go to a transmitter, television transmitter site, you'll see a, even a small power transmitter is a collection of boxes, a power supply box, or a controller box, and a modulator box, and, and a filter box. And, what we decided to do is to make it relatively simple and easy to install and easy to support. And uh, so that's why the MT series is, is one big box. Now, showing you some typical specifications, perhaps I'm just showing off here, but um, showing you the typical specifications in DVB-T2 mode, which is uh, perceived to be a, t a difficult mode to get excellent performance. You can see the kind of performance we're seeing here. Uh, and uh, we have we have uh, really excellent performance. You can see here this is the constellation view. Um, so that is a DVB-T2 signal again. And this is a spectrum photograph showing you the digital spectrum. This is all off of a Roden-Schwartz analyzer. And this is the um, MER versus carrier over time. And the uh, Amplitude probability distribution, so showing you that it's a very linear transmitter. And here's the mean power, CCDF, and showing the echo, echo pattern of the transmitter and the amplitude and phase of the transmitter. Very, very clean design. Amplitude and group delay, uh, plus or minus 20 nanoseconds, plus or minus a half a dB. And modulation error. Now let's talk specifics. The transmitters will do ATSC, they'll do DDBT, they'll do DDBVT2, they'll do ISDBT, both the South American version, known as the B suffix, or the T version. Uh, it does meet critical mask applications. It is uh, there is an optional uh, feature for repeater and gap filler op, uh, applications. It does carry Nautel's standard four-year warranty. It does provide the Nautel-style AUI and other cool features. 
It includes the Nautel Phone Home, which is an innovation from Nautel wherein we help to monitor the health of your transmitter. Your transmitter, should you choose to turn this feature on, can actually send information through the Internet to our servers and allow us to be able to maintain a database of the performance of your transmitter. And in many cases, it allows us to determine before you even call if there's a problem that we should be helping you with. And the, the question that people asked more than anything else at the NAB was, when am I going to have higher power? When am I going to have two kilowatts or four kilowatts? Stay tuned. We're working on that. Here's the information you were looking for. Here's the pricing of the NT series. The 150, 150 watt version in ATSC or DDB2 with digital exciter, adaptive pre-correction, and the integral band pass filter is list priced at $19,975. And the NT500 with those same features, but no bandpass filter is 31250 and the NT receiver module, work, which works in ATSC to provide uh, a receiver for translator and booster installations that integrally mounted is 1200 and we are expecting to begin deliveries of the NT series in August. So here's where we check and see if there are questions that you have had. I didn't think this would be a very long webinar today, but I did want to uh, give everybody the option to, to, to ask questions, and I see none. So I must have done a fine job of explaining the technology today. So with that then, I will let you know that you can keep up to date with Nautel's uh, products, both in the television and the radio side, by subscribing to the Nautel Waves newsletter. You can sign up at www.nautel.com forward slash newsletter. You can see this webinar in an archived fashion, as well as a number of other webinars. Um, at www.nautel.com uh, forward slash webinars. You can check out our YouTube page as shown here. You can check out the Nautel store where you can access all the spare parts that Nautel has available and buy them right online. Um, I did see one comment come up here. Well, several comments have come up. It says, uh, can the gap, fill, gap filler mode do the same channel in and out with echo cancellation? The answer is yes. Um, and that is a function of the modulator for Pro Television. So I can get you more information on that. And it says, is critical mask the same in the USA is the same as the full service mask? And that is, that is absolutely correct too. It's the most, it's the most critical of the, of a mask. It requires very, very steep or uh, very, very uh, sharp side, uh, sides so that, uh, so that you don't interfere with the adjacent channels. So thank you very much for those questions. And uh, with that, I will let you know that we are ready to answer any other questions that may come up. Uh, send us an email at sales at or check, out, uh, check us out on the web at www.nautel.com. For, uh, uh, for now, I'd like to thank you all and uh, wish you a very, very good day. Bye-bye.